Hello there, I'm Tabletop Toby. Welcome. Today we're going to be doing a playthrough of Race to the Raft. Uh, this is Frank West's most recent creation. Um, we're doing the third scenario in Campaign 1. Uh, that's really diving into kind of the heart of the game. There are some tutorial scenarios before that, some practice scenarios. And um, I've done all of those. And uh, we're already set up, so let's get started and see if we can save these cats. All right, so this one's gonna be harder than the tutorial we did before. Um, hopefully we can still save the cats. There's now four, as you can see, from our campaign book. This is the old Teruvian. So it is a paw difficulty of one compared to the, the tutorial scenarios, which were all no paws. So there's four cats, two of them are blue, which is interesting. This is the first scenario where there are two of the same color. So let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. Um, unlike the tutorial scenario, if you watch that, uh, we do have the water tokens we can use to remove fire tiles. Um, I'm not gonna discuss any of the rules except to explain maybe as I'm doing things how they work. But otherwise, check out my tutorial slash how to play video that I've already posted. So we'll get started. Solo rules, we draw three pathway cards and then three extra pathway cards. Each kind of round is six cards. So let's get going. So we need to first figure out a strategy. If you recall from the tutorial video, if you watch that, one of the strategies you want to have is to know where you're going to be placing fire tiles so they don't block your path. So right now, we only have a little area over here. We can't really block this because red has to go there. And one of the additional objectives in this is red has to get there fourth, last. So we have to keep that open. So we don't have a lot of room to play with. Um, I think that being the case, if we could get this blue one out of the way, we basically have this entire corner up here we could play with. So, and red, we could get out of the way over here, set up to go in. And then of course these, as these move across, will have that space. Now purple has to go up a little bit. Blue's right there. This blue has to go down here though, because with this raft C, we have to get them in a specific spot. So I like the idea of getting this blue one out of the way first. So if you recall, the colors on the tops of the four different pathway cards kind of give the uh, potentiality of getting each color. So we definitely want to focus on the two that have 30% blue in those bands, whereas these have much smaller counts blue. Since we have two blue cats, it will be good to get blue going early on. So this one is blue and red. This one is blue and green, which is not as useful. So for now, because if we got red kind of in position and ready to go yeah i think we're going to focus on this stack for our first draw so three of that one and and that's focused on red as the second option do we want to switch to this so we might get purple I think that's maybe a good idea because we only need a couple of red cards to get red over. So I think for our three extra cards, we're gonna draw all from the same deck, still focusing on blue, but now with a chance of a purple draw. So these will go here as our extra cards. And we now may look at our actual hand so this one is interesting no blue at all that has a strip of blue that can help us and that has some blue 
So let's go ahead and try to get this guy out of the way, and maybe we can get blue over here as well in the first round. So let's see what our options are. So our options for blue are these two cards. We could just do a straight path down. That doesn't really do anything with us. We did that. That maybe, or I guess, oh, actually, we could do that. Get several spaces over, but let's start with this and then we can see what we draw. So, on your turn, you can either play a pathway card or you can move a cat, which we'll see the move a cat later. So, we're going to play that pathway card. Every time you play a pathway card, you have to draw a fire tile from the fire tile bag. So we have this. Now our options for placement are pretty limited right now. I think we're gonna go directly in this corner for the moment. Um, I think we're gonna wanna move that blue um, once we have a couple of paths down for the blue cat. So let's go ahead and do this one. Or blue has to come down. So we could also do that as a straight path down. Although when we draw the fire tile now, it's gonna limit our options where if I go this way, we could potentially put some here. So I think that's what we're gonna do in case we draw a large fire tile. Um, and I did realize I forgot uh, in the solo mode, when you, at the end of playing a card, the end of your turn, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, you're supposed to draw from the extra deck. So I'm gonna just draw one for my prior turn to cover that. But now, because we did play a pathway card, we have to draw another fire tile. This one will kind of fit really nicely right there. That was my actual cat. I don't know if you could hear it. I will see what she wants. Well, per usual, she wanted food, but it is not feeding time yet. So you might hear her meow a couple times, but I think because this is race to the raft and we're trying to save the cats, if she wants to chime in, that is fine. <laughs> Um, she's rubbing against my legs now, um, in case you were wondering, hoping to sway me. All right, we place the fire tile, and then now I draw up. Okay, that's great. More blue. So now, do I push my luck a little bit and try to place another blue one before I move the blue? Or do I discard one of these and go ahead and move blue out of the way so we can start using that? Hmm. We do have this corner down here because there's not a yellow or green cat. So I'm gonna push my luck a little bit. And let's see what we can do. I think if we do this, attaches to that one and gets at least another space down. That's what we'll do. Draw a fire tile. And this is great. This goes right here. And then we draw the other extra card, which is blue. So we could push our luck a little bit more and try to get that blue cat out of the way as much as possible. I think we're going to do that. I believe in us, mostly. So what, do that. But this cat probably can go to the lower one. And it already has the blue there. So, hmm. Placement does make it more challenging. If I could do this, and if I got a straight line across, I could get there. So I think I'm going to do that. Draw 
yet another fire tile. This one can fit really nicely there. We're getting really lucky with the shapes. Look, no extra spots whatsoever left open. That is genius. Okay, and then now we have no blue left, so we might as well go ahead and discard one of these. That's your way that you move cats, is you discard one card to move the cat. Now this is the optimal red move, which we'll get the furthest, versus the square. So we're gonna discard this one, which means we can now move this blue guy all the way down the path. And you can move it as far as you can along the path, anywhere along the path. The only rule is that you can't not move by for discarding a card. You can't end up in the same spot, but neither of those are going to be an issue for us. I think we're just going to go right there. Okay, and then we have all of the space open now to put fire tiles because we have cleared that cat out. And I think for this one, we're just going to do that. to get the red cat a path going to get out of the way so we can then place fire tiles there. And because we placed a pathway card, we draw a fire tile. We can now go up here if we want because we've cleared the blue cat out. I think we're gonna do something like now, I've played all the cards in my hand. I have none of the extra cards left. So it is the rest phase. And I did forget when I moved the blue cat, I should have placed the blue cat on the side to show that the cat's exhausted. And that means that you would now have to discard two cards to have the cat move further. Um, but it's the rest phase. So the blue cat stands right back up and then we draw cards again. So the flow of the game is pretty simple. The challenge really comes in the puzzle itself, weighing those risks of which cards you're gonna pick up, pushing your luck a little bit like I did. If I had gotten unlucky, maybe it would have been a little bit more challenging, though I did have some room down here too. Um, but as the game goes on, that pressure kind of increases as the fire spreads. So it kind of feels thematic with the the fire spreading and slowly taking over the board, it does increase that pressure. And I think that's really fun. Um, I like danger. That's how I roll. <laughs> uh, I promise not to use that voice too much. All right, so got this blue one out of the way. I think it would behoove us to get these purple and blue out of the way so we can start opening this up to be used for fire as well. Now this is where it's another conundrum. This blue does have a chance of purple. This purple does have a good chance of blue. So I think I'm gonna initially focus on the purple because it has a greater chance of blue than the blue has chance of purple. So we're gonna do three of these triangles into my hand. And then maybe we'll do a fourth one of those into the extra hand. And then I'll do two of these blue with the chance of purple to fill out that extra hand. We can now look at our hand. Let's see here. Ooh. Okay, this is a good purple one. Blue. This is kind of helpful. Hmm. It's not a great blue one. It doesn't get us across. So we'll save that for now. And I think our best option is to get a purple path going for now. now you see, I was lucky there was already a purple one connected there. Is there any advantage? down here to connect. I don't know that there is, but I 
think doing that kind of keeps my options between those and going across. So if I got one where it was in the middle and I couldn't adjust. So that's what we're gonna do. So I draw a fire tile. Have all this space up here to use. I think we're gonna do that. Um, these fire tiles are really great quality, super thick cardboard. Um, I think they're gonna hold up pretty well. Um, obviously, uh, shuffling in this bag may have wear over time, but we shall see. They seem great so far. Um, all right, so I only have two cards in my hand, so I draw up from the extra one. And this is not a great one for us either. Yellow we don't have, green we don't have, and just a smidge of red. Hmm. I guess in that case, huh. Ugh. Can't cover up that purple to connect that blue. Hmm. I think my best option is gonna be to kinda continue purple over her. Hmm. So I could do that. I think we'll do that. So I placed a pathway card so I draw a fire tile. This is okay. Well, no, I would block that square and because of those there. So I'm gonna still stick over here for now. I do have room. I need to get these cats out of here. And this is where I was talking about the pressure building. So, down to two cards. So let's hope for a little better luck. Let's do, so the purple one's gonna hit blue. So if we can get this blue one home, so we're gonna pick up this one and hope for blue and we don't have blue. So, yellow and green, which are useless. And red, we could get red more out of the way is a good option. Otherwise, we just have this blue we can use. And right now, that is not looking great, but I think we can move this red cat pretty far, but the thing is we need to get the cat there. right in front of it because we can't put ourselves in a position where the cat is there and then we can't lay a tile to get there. So it has to be almost a tile's worth away. And what's interesting is we could do something like this and then that connects there. I think that might actually be our best option because then depending on what we have, now you have to remember the tiles to go over. So you don't want to put the cat there because you block that path. I think just getting the red cat out of the way maybe is a good option. Let's draw a fire tile. Okay. Hmm. That kind of leaves a gap there. We can't block that. Oof, that is not useful. I think we're gonna have to do that. So kind of inefficiency of a space there, but we need to clear these guys out. So let's see what our last one is. Hopefully this is something helpful. Okay, purple. That's gonna be good because we can at least 
go that far. I think that's our best option. That's not a great blue one. I'll be able to maybe place this on my next turn to at least do something with it. But right now, I'm going to place that and then hope for not too bad of a fire tile. Okay, so this one. What can we do with this? Could do that. Yeah, I think that's, well, let me just think. Purple's going to be coming across. We may want to place a tile there. I guess. Now with fire tiles, they have to at least be adjacent, which is not include diagonal. So we could do something like this. Since blue has to go straight across, I think that's going to be okay. But I think we really need to make space because we're getting a little crunched with the fire placement because we just have this little corner and we're running out of room there. Um, that's going to require a specific shape. So let's get one of these cats out of the way. This one is not particularly useful for red. So we're going to discard this one so we can move the purple cat all the way down the path to there. We'll have to get blue out of the way first, but it does open up this space for fire tiles. So now we will draw a fire tile. And what do we have? Now this one we can actually place like that, so that's a little better. Okay, and then we just have this one card left. We, oh, we can't. Hmm. Can't place it there. That leaves a gap on the blue. So, we need to see. So this, let's see if that's useful. Hmm. We could do something like that, actually. So that we're building the blue path there. So we draw a fire tile. Okay, not getting small ones that fit in that gap, so, but we have this space over here now, which is nice. We could use something like that. And that does still leave us room down there. This is still danger zone. I could go down here leave that corner. I think that's what we're going to do for now until I figure out how to get that blue guy over. Alright, so I've played all the cards in my hand. I have no extra cards left. Um, I forgot to flip purple on its side because he was exhausted, so let's exhaust the purple one. And then, oh, it's rest period. He goes back up. <laughs> um, and then we draw cards again. So we now really are feeling the pressure of the fire. So we have this space, which is great, but if we could get blue across, so we need blue, and then we need to get this blue guy home so it opens up the path for purple. So let's focus on blue for my hand. We gotta get some blue that's gonna get us home and then purple, we are red. I mean, we can get out of the way a little bit, but we'll wait until we have a card that we really can't use. Um, I really want to make sure that we can get 
blue moving along. So for the extra hand, I'm gonna do another of the same one, which does have a chance of purple. So maybe we'll get something useful for purple as well. I'll do another of those, but then I'll do one with a greater chance of purple for my third one. So let's see how we did. Okay, lots of blue there, and then a long purple, which will get us across, so that is looking helpful. We gotta get that blue guy out of the way first, so do we wanna go ahead and get this blue guy home first? Now this is interesting because there's purple there as well. So I'm gonna do that because that may serve double duty for getting the purple one up there. straight purple line, which we already have, then we can overlay here, and then that purple one can get all the way home. Whereas this blue one can now go down here, and then we'll just have to get that one there. So I think that's gonna be our placement. So we draw a fire tile. Okay, this one will fit nicely right there. we already know how we're going to get this one across. We do get to draw another one. Now we already have a plan to get purple home, so I'm less concerned about this one. Let's keep building out the blue one's path. So purple and green, not useful at all. I think we're going to discard this one to have blue go all the way home. So we have our first cat on a raft. So I guess technically he won, he or she won the race to the raft. So good job, blue. And then purple. We can go ahead and get home as well, but we do get a draw up our extra card, and I think we need to do another blue. Okay, so that's good. We have another blue path. We need to get that blue cat out of there. Um, so this one's not useful yet, but it will be in a minute. I think we're gonna do this. And we placed a, a pathway card, I should say. So we draw a fire tile. This fits nicely there. Thankfully we're drawing some smaller ones now. I feel like we got a lot of big ones at the beginning. So I have two cards. I'm gonna draw the last one, which is a bunch of purple and just a smidge of blue. So not super helpful at this point because we already have another option for purple, but that's okay. We do need to do some movement as well. Hmm. The only blue I have, though, is kind of problematic. I guess I could do something like that and then go straight across. Then if I just needed to connect those three across. So it wasn't my plan. I was planning on doing that, but I have what I have. I can't do that because it goes off the board. So, I think that's what we're going to do. Right there. And then because we placed a pathway card, we draw a fire tile. And we can do that and leave just a gap up there. I believe there is a fire tile in that exact shape but we don't know if we're gonna get it, and I like leaving my options open, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I hate seeing those empty spaces, though, because that means that's one less space on the board that I have to place fire, but 
sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, now, I think what we're gonna do now is we can place this, but let's get blue out of the way so we can start opening up at least this bottom corner as an option. Because we could go ahead and place purple and then discard for this round and get purple home, but blue pretty much has to do that same course. So I think it's more important that we get blue out of the way. This tile is actually a more flexible tile because it can be on one end or in the middle and go around. So we're going to hold on to this one and we're going to discard this one to the disaster discard. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And that means I can now move this blue one as far as I want. And I'm going to go all the way. I'll remember this time to actually place the cat on its side so it is discarded. <laughs> discarded? No, exhausted. <laughs> like me, apparently, because I don't know what I'm saying. Um, so that is that turn. Uh, but before we can begin our next turn, we have to talk about this disaster discard. Once from Moving Cat, you have placed four pathway cards. You have to discard discard them. They're in the disaster discard to begin with. Now they're officially discarded and that triggers drawing an extra fire type. So we drew a big one. So, But we got blue out of the way a little bit. So let's see what we can do. Could do something like that because it still leaves that open. It will leave a gap there though. That leaves an even bigger gap. I could do something like that, but then you need just a small tile to go there. So I think we're gonna do this. I think that leaves us options still available. Um, did create a little bit of a gap there, but I think it's going to be okay. We'll find out, I guess. And then we just have one pathway card left. We're going to do that, which is going to create the path for purple home. And because we placed a pathway card, we draw a fire tile. And I think this guy can go right there. All right, we've played all of our cards. We have no extra cards left, so we will unexhaust the blue cat, and then we'll draw our six cards, three for our hand, three for the extras. So purple is done. So we just need blue and red, and we really need to make sure we can get blue across. Um, so this one, or actually, there's an equal 30-30 of red and blue. So that is going to be our perfect card because that's all we need. So we're going to pretty much go all in on this one. So three of those to my hand, three of them to the extra cards. So let's see what we drew. And not a lot of blue, <laughs> but red. So it looks like we'll be able to get a path for red set up because red does have to be the fourth cat to arrive. So, um, I kind of, because I got purple home, I kind of had to cover that. Let's go ahead and do this so we can get blue maybe out of the way here. I'm getting a lot of, I have a lot of overlays going on in this section, so um, then it gets a little wonky, but not unmanageably wonky. Okay, because these are thin enough. All right, so I placed a pathway card, so I do have to draw a fire tile, and 
Where is our friend going to go? So we can actually do that. Look at how much fire has spread across the island. Hopefully we can get these cats out of here. Okay, let's draw our next card. It's a lot of red. We really need blue. But we could... Go ahead and create a path for red, which I think is what we're going to have to do. Um, Cause then we could discard one of these tiles because they would be useless then and get red out of the way. And then we'd have a little space for those up there. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So we placed a path of a card, so we draw a fire tile. And this one. Hmm. Getting a little tight. But we can actually do that. Okay. I think that's going to be okay. Down to two cards, so we draw up. Still no blue. This is becoming a problem. So I think what we're gonna do this turn. Moving purple, we get purple home. Moving red though gives us more space for it to fire tiles, which we're starting to desperately need. So we're gonna draw this one, which only has yellow and red, and we already have a path home for red. So we're going to discard that, and we can move red as far as we want. You don't have to move it all the way. So what we're going to do is go all the way right before getting on the raft. So that is that turn. We only have two cards, so we draw up, and thank goodness we got a blue. So that will almost get us there have to think about that in a second. In the meantime, I think that now is the best time to go ahead and discard one of these cards that aren't going to do anything for us and take purple all the way to the raft. And then we have to figure out kind of what our optimal option is here. This guy is creating a little bit of a placement problem. It's limiting my options a little bit. But we want to try not to use one of the water ones because these do decrease your score. Technically, when you win a scenario, it's five. But if you use one of the water ones, each one subtracts a point. So often I've found a good strategy because of the layering that you have to do is to have a row or a couple, if it's a couplet, next to the exit. And then if you can just connect across, then you can get the cat home. So we're going to place that right there. And draw a fire tile. Now we have all the space to play with. We can actually place down here as well. Hmm. Here, let's see here. I could do this. fade a little bit. Look at that fire licking at the raft, but we only really need this space right here to connect across. So I don't think that's going to cause a problem, and it allows me to not leave a gap anywhere. Last one is mostly useless, but instead of placing it and having to place a fire tile, we're going to go ahead and discard that 
just to move them along. We don't really need to do that, but it allows us not to have to place a fire tile. And there's really no reason to stay further back because if I can get three across, then we can get there. So I think that's okay to go as far as they can. So having moved, the blue cap becomes exhausted. So we're in the rest phase because we've played all the cards in our hand and have no extra cards. So we stand him back up. All right, we only care about blue. So it doesn't really matter as long as we do one of the ones with 30%. So we'll do those three to our hand and these three to the extra set. So let's see here. What do we have? Lots of blue, so I think we are going to be in the clear here. This placement right there is going to create and complete our path. So we place that. We do have to draw one last fire tile. So we got this uh, oddly shaped one. Let's see where we can put that. We can do that there. And then we discard one of, oh wait, we officially, we are supposed to draw this card up, although it doesn't matter. And then we discard any one of these and that blue cat gets home. Now, because that is the fourth card in our disaster discard pile, we do have to move those to the discard and draw an extra fire tile. But I think in this case it is not going to impact us whatsoever. Place that one right there just because I like the cohesive uh, fire image that's going on here. And then we draw up because we only have two cards, this one. This draw is also irrelevant because all we're going to do now is discard this. The red one is the fourth one so we meet the bonus objective and all of the cats have escaped. They have made it to the raft. They've all won the race, really. I mean, the one blue did get there first first, but it's cooperative, so they're all winners. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this. As you can see, um, it gets pretty challenging pretty quickly. I felt not ever in complete danger of losing, but there were times where I definitely had to think a little bit more about placement and what risk I was taking. So I can't imagine we're pretty early in the campaign book at this point uh, in campaign one um, and it's uh, one paw. Um, so things are definitely going to ramp up, but I like that. I think this is the kind of game that the more you play, you're going to see those patterns. You're going to understand the risks and how to place and those strategies of like I've discovered that one of setting up the escape um, because you start to learn the different patterns that appear on the cards and the different options that are going to show up. So it's going to increase in challenge, but your tools are going to increase as well as you learn the game. So looking forward to continuing to dive into this game. Um, I'm going to play it a lot and I think what we're going to come back around with next is jumping to that two Paula difficulty. So we'll do one of those and then maybe we'll do a three, four, and five. And you can watch me suffer <laughs> with the flames on my heels as we move up in difficulty. So you can look forward to, to my torture um, uh, at the uh, stake there. So thanks for joining me. And um, just remember... The only rule is that there are no rules, except in board games. <laughs>